Good morning and welcome back. Today we're looking at prepping our center cases for our 250R motor. Um, we're going to go ahead and install the bearings and seals into them. So I've got uh, bearings for the right crankcase half, bearings for the left, seals for the left, seal for the right. I'm going to take the bearings. We're going to we're gonna do things uh, a little easier. I've seen online people doing it and have done this myself with transmissions and transfer cases. We're gonna, we're gonna heat up this case. Um, I'm not gonna use propane or a heat gun. Um, the Cerakote that's on here is good for up to about 1800 degrees. So I'm gonna actually put these in the oven for probably about a half hour, 40 minutes at about 225 degrees. Um, that'll nice and evenly heat up the cases to get a little expansion and then I'm going to put the bearings in the freezer for about an hour That'll get a little bit of contraction and then everything should drop right in um, I think that'll be the easiest way um, First thing I'm going to do is just make sure all my my bearing surfaces are nice and clean um, I mean they're all the cases have been cleaned, but just make sure there's no debris in them that would potentially um, inhibit the bearing from seating all the way and then I've got some sockets that uh, you know will fit perfectly you know for tapping the bearing in bearing any of the bearings in if needed shouldn't need much more than that um, for anybody that's you know if you're gonna try this method with heating them up in the oven make sure that if you have paint on your cases that they're um, it's able to handle that kind of heat um, uh, discuss it with your wife first if you're going to be doing it in that set, in that in that way. Um, I have seen people online heat up with propane torch. Um, I've heard others obviously say avoid uh, map gas or acetylene gas just because I guess it can heat the metal up too fast, um, potentially get out of hand. Um, I mean this is aluminum, so you want to obviously be cautious how quickly you heat it as well as how hot. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and get that all stuff all set up. Um, I'll be back once I have these heated up and uh, the bearings shrunk down as best we can. And then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so we are ready to put these in the oven. We've got all of our tools here. Like I said, we're gonna leave them in for about 30 to 40 minutes at about 225. Bearings are in the freezer, um, so we're gonna Go ahead and get these put in. Um, and then uh, once they're ready, we'll pull them out and we should have everything we need to go ahead and drop the bearings in. All right, see you guys in about 30 minutes. All right, we are in for about 30, 35 minutes. So what I'm gonna actually do is shut the oven off and I'm gonna pull the right case half out that's the first one we're going to do and uh, i'm going to leave the left one in there to keep it warm and i'm going to set the camera up so that we can uh, get in position to start uh, start putting these bearings in okay let's get started we'll start with the larger crank bearing It's crispy. That is crispy. Having to tap that a little bit more than I anticipated. As soon as it sets down in there, you feel it sink right down in. Okay, that one's in. There is one shielded bearing on here. We're going to drop that with the shielded side down. 
And that one just about dropped in on its own. flip this over. There's a larger bearing that goes on the back side of this right case. And that one dropped right in. <laughs> and look at that. We're warmed up all right. Bearings are falling right out. They're warming up. Sounds like I'm tapping these with a lot of force, but I'm really not. And again, you can hear when they bottom out. Okay. That definitely gets them in there. This one here is held in with little retaining clips and that one I know drops in very easily. That's why I wanted to do that one last. Okay, as, as it's cooling down, obviously, like the bearing's not falling out the way it was before. Can look on the back side and verify that it is seated completely. You can look over on the edge here and verify it's seated completely. You can come in here and look and verify that the crank bearing is seated completely. So that one is done. I'm going to move that off to the side and then I'm going to go ahead and bring the left case half out. Okay, I position this one up on uh, blocks of wood just so that there's no pressure on the clutch lever and it'll sit nice and flat. And now we can go ahead and we will start with the crank bearing. As you can see, that one dropped right in there. This one has five bearings. Got another shielded bearing. The shield goes down. We have another larger bearing that gets held in with the retainer now. This one you can see has a little groove that the retainers go into. 
So you're going to want to make sure that that groove sits up. Okay, there are two more in here. One is a very, very small, thin uh, bearing that goes for, I believe that's where your shift drum sits. This one is going to probably take a little tapping to get that one in. Now I've seen people use this method for removing bearings as well. Literally by heating the case up, you're able to just turn the case over and tap it. And as just as you saw in the video there, um, where I was dropping the bearings, um, the bearings will fall right out. Okay, so the four main bearings are in. The last one to do on this case half is for your clutch lever. So I'm going to reposition myself so I can stand this thing up on end and uh, tap, tap that one in from the top. Okay, I got it started, drove it down until it's flush, and that's where I'm going to come in with this socket and hopefully be able to drive this all the way in. This would definitely be a little easier with another set of hands. Again, as you can see, while these are warm, they pop right in and out. At least that one does. That's one of the ones that's held in with the retainers. Okay, I'm going to pause this. I think I need an extension on this socket to make it a little easier to tap in. All right, putting an extension on that actually was the best way to go, but I actually found out that by laying it on the blocks and tapping it in horizontally like this with just putting one of the gloves over to protect my arm and holding it down was actually, I was able to hit it the easiest and uh, drive it in. And as you can see, that's pretty well seated. So these bearings, I'm just gonna make sure that they're completely seated. I'll put them on the tray and uh, let them cool off. All right, so our Case bearings are fully installed. These are for the center cases. And we've got this one in here. I'm going to let these case halves cool off completely and then we'll go back out to the shop. We're going to put our seals in and we're going to go ahead and put our, our cylinder mounting uh, bolts, uh, studs, excuse me, put those in. And that'll be it for today's video. All right, back out in the shop. As you can see, bearings are all installed. Next step is to put these small retaining plates. We've got two of them in for these bearings here. For this bearing here, I should say. Okay, and as you can see, that will go right up on that on that that lip that I was showing you on the bearing and it retains that bearing right in place so <clears throat> I'm gonna take these little Phillips head screws I'm gonna put a little dab of blue Loctite on them set them in torque them down all right both of those are in 
there, I, there's no particular torque spec. I just snugged them down good and tight. And that should hold them right in there, especially with a little bit of Loctite on them. Okay, so now we do the same thing on, on these, this bearing here with these retainers. These are put in and retained with a small hex head bolt. Right here, I'm going to put it again, a drop a lot tight on them, put them in, and then the manual st states to torque them to six to nine foot pounds. So we're going to go to that seven and a half, eight foot pound range right in the middle, and then we'll go ahead and torque them down. Okay, we got those installed, so now we're just going to torque these to eight foot pounds. Now those are installed. Next step is going to be to go ahead and put our seals in. Let's get set up to do that. Next going to be to install our seals. We've got four seals we're going to be putting on this center case. This is for our clutch lever, for shifter. Um, this one is for your sprocket. And then this one is for the crank. So we're gonna go ahead and get those in. I usually put a little Sil Glide or uh, dielectric grease on them, help them slide in, but they should pop right in. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start with the uh, clutch lever. All right, got the seals in this case. We've got for the sprocket, shifter. They all pressed right into place. This one ended up tapping this one down. This one has to be set down six millimeters below the surface. So you gotta make sure that that one's tapped down six millimeters. So we're all good there. And all we have left now is one seal, one big crank seal to do on the right case half and then the seals will be all done. All right, now that crank seal is in and that pretty much just drops just below flush with the, with the surface there. This one's in surf flush with this surface. This is flush here. This drops just a little below flush. This one, like I said, was six millimeters below this edge. And now all the seals are in. Last thing we're gonna do today is put our lower cylinder mounting studs in. So I'm gonna get those ready and uh, we'll go ahead and get those installed. Okay, the last step what we're gonna do today is we're gonna install our lower cylinder studs um, into the uh, into our case halves. As you can see on, on these studs, let me get one because some of them are a little, vary a little bit. You can see one side is really rounded, the other side is flat. Flat side's gonna go in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double nut them and uh, put a little anti-seize on it and then run them in. We're not gonna be torquing these, these just basically just gonna run them in hand snug. Um, not gonna be torquing these down real tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. All right, so double nutted the stud, little anti-seize on the ends. Just so you know, I chased these threads with a 10 by 1.25 millimeter tap just to make sure they're cleaned up. There's no debris down in there from, you know, from blasting or anything like that. So, and you'd be amazed how much crap came out of those holes. So uh, hopefully this will make this installation much easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this one in and we'll get ready for the next one. Okay, we got this side done. And now we're gonna get this half done.
just working them in easy till I feel it bottom out. And it's just about there. And then I'll just torque it just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna stop it right there. And now we'll get this last one in. I'm going to pop those two double nuts off. And that wraps up the uh, pre-assembly of our center cases, our bearings, seals, our lower cylinder studs are installed, bearing retainers are installed and torqued. Same thing on this half, seals are all in and bearings are all in. All right, so we are done with this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped anybody out there doing this. Thank you for following along and joining us. If you like what we're doing, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave them below. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next video.